Well guys, Halloween is here, and you know what that means. I am gonna be stuck in my room during the weeks leading up to this holiday working on videos, and then getting together with my best friend to watch horror movies all the way up till midnight on Halloween night while dining on pizza and candy. Good times, good, good, good times. Uh, 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 Halloween Horror Nights tickets, anyone? Anyone? Anyways, a lot like I do for my birthday, my anniversary specials, Christmas, my sub milestones, pretty much anything special on my channel, I wonder what unique elements I can incorporate. As for Halloween, I've so far done three specials. My first one in 2015 was a typical narrator special, where I counted down the 13 days of Halloween. I got other narrators on board to help me, both big and small. Then for 2017, I did a vocal cover of Jack's Lament, which I'm still very proud of. I'm even thinking of doing a follow-up for a Christmas special, where I do What's This, coming soon. Then last year, since it was the year I started doing dark ambient musical pieces, I decided to do a dark instrumental cover of Haunted by Disturbed. I really like how I made it sound, like a stroll down an abandoned road during trick-or-treating. Now this year, I had a couple plans in mind to make yet another unique special. My first plan was to try to make it to Mickey's Halloween party, do your typical YouTuber vlog, but those plans got cancelled. Then I asked an author if I could do an incredible story of theirs with very creative elements I've never done in a video before, but they turned me down. I'm not blaming them or anything, because it was an understandable reason. I just, you know, wish I could have done something with it, because it was really cool. After some pondering, I came up with something that I think could be fun. I guess you could call it an experiment. See how this special goes and see if something great can come out of it. It's basically where I share with you guys all the movies I typically love to watch on Halloween. Keep in mind that they're not all horror movies, even though there's some in here. There are some simply spooky themed ones I included as well. Actually, I would say most of them are like that. And as always, when I share my thoughts on things, which I will be doing here, I want to know yours as well. Do you agree with what I say? Do you not? And please feel free to discuss the topic in the comments below. Let's make this holiday special intimate. Let's get everyone involved. So I think I wasted enough time. Here we go. My top five favorite movies to watch on Halloween. Number five, The Haunted Mansion. So a lot of people around me as well as online don't seem to look upon this movie with much fondness. Some find it dull, some find it dumb, some find it not quite capturing the spirit of the ride it's based on. But in order to understand why I personally enjoy this movie, you need to know that back in the day when I was really into creepy things, my access to creepy things was very minimum, simply because I lived in a very strongly religious household. I was given little to no wiggle room in the horror genre. So when I saw something that even had a sprinkle of horror in it, I was hooked. And that is what the movie adaptation of The Haunted Mansion gave me. And besides the creepiness here and there, I actually find this movie to be a pretty epic adventure. Is it exactly what you'd expect after seeing the attraction? Not really. Is Eddie Murphy annoying at times? Yeah, but honestly I think Murphy gets a bad rap for being the lead in this film. I actually really enjoy his reactions to everything. It can be spastic, but also unimpressed at times, and I just find it really funny. Besides, this is not his worst movie. He's been way less funny in other movies. I especially love Terrence Stamp as the butler. My god, is his performance awesome. He can even be intimidating, especially near the end. The ghosts are a lot of fun to watch, all these cool rooms that get explored, and oh my god, that mausoleum scene. Even today it disturbs the hell out of me. I, I just don't like dead bodies and places full of them. It's one of my honest phobias. I'm just gonna stop playing this clip. Not a universally enjoyed Disney film, but if you're a Disney fan and a fan of lighthearted spookiness to get you prepped for Halloween, I would recommend seeking this movie out. Number 4, Frankenweenie. Wow. Let me just say that before I watched this movie, I had low expectations. I thought it was going to be your simple little kids comedy about a dog that is brought back to life Frankenstyle. Maybe a teary eyed moment here and there, I've seen shit like this in Casper cartoons before, no big deal. But Jesus Christ was this movie amazing. Let's start with one of the main highlights for me, the style. Tim Burton returns to Disney as this film's animator and I mean you can't go wrong with Burton. Once you have him, you know you're going to get something strangely bizarre yet interesting. And it doesn't stop there, oh no no no. We have it in black and white, referencing old monster flicks. That is both brilliant and ballsy. A lot of films rely on color for their visuals, but not this movie. This manages to have stunning visuals in just black and white. 
But the brilliance doesn't even stop there. We have references all throughout the movie to these monster flicks, and they fit so well. They didn't feel forced. We got to see all these unique twists on the monster mash. They, they did it very well. We've got this tall boy who is so obviously Imhotep that I couldn't help but laugh whenever he was on screen. We got references to the creature from the Black Lagoon, Dracula, Godzilla. Godzilla is even brought to life by a Japanese kid. How cool is that? There's a kid who is literally supposed to be Igor and... Wait, he's voiced by Brick? The adorable kid from the middle? Okay, what does he bring to the role? Your dog is alive! I know it is so impossible, but you did it! You did it! How... How can you not love that? And lastly, yes, this movie did have a lot of heart put into it. I thought it was just going to be this LOL story about a kid who loses his dog, so he, so he decides to bring him to life, insert corpse bride level slapstick here. But no, they do put a lot of emotion into it. You feel what the main character feels. When that dog got hit by a truck, I was pretty damn sad. It wasn't played for shits and giggles, it was handled exactly how something like that should be handled. And you just continue to feel for the main character and his dog. I just love this movie, and in my opinion, it's one of Tim Burton's best. Number 3. The Addams Family, 1991. As someone who wasn't as interested in the original show, and no, that doesn't mean I barely watched it before seeing this movie, I just remember it very vaguely and wasn't really hooked back then. So, for a change, I'm not going to be comparing this movie adaptation to the show. I'm going to judge it on its own merits. And on its own merits? It is a blast. For one, I love the cast they got for this movie. Everyone plays their role very well. Angelica Houston plays a great Morticia. Christina Ricci is a great Wednesday. Raul Julia as Gomez was a lot of fun. R.I.P. by the way, I just found out he died a year after the sequel to this movie was made. Damn. But I gotta say, my favorite actor in this movie has to be Christopher Lloyd, who plays Fester. I love it because it's... it's just too perfect. Lloyd has that very distinctive, hyperactive look on him, and is a well-known eccentric in his movie career. So, put that together with the awkward and jolly role of Fester Adams, and you got this magical combination. They have this very clever plot where Fester has been missing for years, ending up getting amnesia and is taken in by an evil old lady who takes on the role of his mother and convinces him he's a thug-like brute named Gordon. My only issue being is he apparently went missing long before Wednesday and Pugsley were supposed to be born. Not sure how that works. I guess you could call this a prequel maybe? At first I thought this plot was kind of a disservice to the character of Fester. I mean, he's technically not even in the movie, it's just an imposter. I was thinking after all the bonding he did with the family that they were just gonna make the fake Fester replace the original, which I thought was gonna be kinda lame. But they did pull a clever twist at the end, which was, yeah, it is the real Fester, just with memories of only ever being Gordon. I really like the resolution to this story. And while I wasn't that interested in how tame the macabre humor was in the original show, the macabre outcast humor was always enjoyable and they took it to the fucking max in this movie. To the point where when they told half the jokes, I had to say holy shit to myself. It could be dark as hell, but they make it funny. That PG-13 rating is well deserved. I don't see a kid watching this and not being scarred by some of these jokes. I always find it enjoyable diving into the daily life of absolute weirdos, and they do a good job of that here. And they don't make it miserable at all, if anything, these are characters you can get invested in. When bad things happen to them that do affect them, I do feel bad. They just want to live their lives happily and bad shit insane. In real life, you would probably avoid these people like the plague, but, but when I see the family in this movie, I honest to god want a tour of this damn house. I want to hang out with these creeps. I'd gladly take an arrow to the head if it's fired by this kid. Overall, if you're looking for a good time that's kooky, spooky, and altogether crazy, pop this in on a movie night. Number 2. Dead Silence Okay, here's an actual horror movie. One actually made the list. And the main reason why only one real horror movie made the list is when it comes to actual horror films, I change it up every year. I don't usually go back to the same ones. However, Dead Silence does fall into that category. Let me explain why I always come back to this movie. Two reasons. One, it was one of my first real horror films that wasn't a slasher. And two, 
I saw this when I was quite young. I was around 12 in fact, and let me just say, it was nightmare fuel. I could not sleep well the night after I saw this. For one, it was during the time where horror movies were not allowed in my parents' house. I had to sneak this home. I dared not tell my parents I saw this film, no matter how traumatized I was after my first viewing. And during this time, as icing to the cake, I owned my very own ventriloquist dummy, a Charlie McCarthy one. Guess who was sold not long after I saw this James Wan mindfuck? While this may not be that disturbing or scary to some, or as much to me now, it still sticks with me to this day, and I will usually return to this just to get a true horror kick. So now I covered why this scares me, but now let's talk about why it entertains me. Mostly it has to do with the fact that it's a horror mystery. At the very beginning where Jamie Ashen gets an old grave ventriloquist dummy, I'm like holy shit, where did this nightmare come from? And they don't tell you right away, it's completely up to the imagination until the movie continues to explain later. I will admit, after the first death in this movie, I thought they were gonna pull some bullshit about the dummy being a living thing, and it's out to kill everyone via Chucky-level puppet work, but it doesn't surprisingly. And in a way, it makes Billy here a truly terrifying doll. Once you see this movie and figure out what this doll actually does, you would be pretty creeped out too. And let's talk about the atmosphere and set design. Just look at that. Look at Raven's Fair. It is the most bleak, depressing, and haunting place I have seen in a movie. How did they make this place somewhere I would not so much as pass in my car just by adding a little bit of blue and a little bit of a spooky choir in the background? That is something of pure beauty and the most morbid way. My only real issue with this film is probably Donnie Wahlberg's character, honestly. I mean, his acting is good. He even has some funny lines. But Jesus is he annoying in this movie. Whenever he shows up, he just slows everything down. And I get it, he's a cop, and he's suspecting that Jamie is a murderer. But seriously, all I want to do is see what Jamie discovers and what freaky shit he encounters next. And this asshole officer just has to interrupt everything. It's not something that drags this movie down too much, but it's a pain to put up with sometimes. However, I still consider the plot of this movie fantastic. The further the movie goes, the more the mystery unfolds. The more you find out about the history, the killings, what role our main character plays in all of this, and your eyes get raped with disturbing imagery, the more it does. And if I see another one of those tongueless corpses, I think I'm gonna have a breakdown. Let's just move on, shall we? Alright, I figured before I talk about the number one movie on this list, it would be unfair not to have honorable mentions, since there's plenty of fun movies to watch during Spooktober, but of course, not everything could make the list. Let's talk about them very briefly. Scary Movie. While Scream would be a better pick, I haven't watched that as often as I've watched Scary Movie. As good as Scream is, Scary Movie kinda does what Scream promises, but delivers it more fully. A satire of a horror movie. Scary Movie has so many hilarious parody jokes, even though some of them are stupidly over the top. It's good to see the flaws of horror films poked fun at. Too bad so many other parody movies tried to copy what Scary Movie did and made them shitty. Child's Play I wasn't really crazy about this franchise, like, at all. I'll never understand why Chucky is supposed to be frightening. For the majority of movies, he screams and curses and flat out makes jokes. However, the little bit of horror I did find in this series was in this movie. I really liked the build-up in the first half where they keep Chucky in the shadows, making him out to be this mysterious, stealthy killer. And out of all the designs across the films, the, the design on this Chucky model was pretty creepy. So I have to give credit for these things. And I'd be lying if I said I hadn't seen this multiple times around this time of year. Usually for shits and giggles. Along with the other sequels. Gremlins. Talk about an addictive movie. I must have seen this a thousand times. And no matter how many times I do, I still love it. It's not a full-on horror movie, even though there's horror elements in it. And... Well, technically it's a Christmas movie, you could argue Child's Play is also. But this movie is just a ton of fun. It's so enjoyable watching these furry little cuties turn into green slimy monsters and just having a hell of a time tormenting everybody. The action is great, the plot is great, the suspense, the comical moments. I highly recommend it to anyone, it's a classic. Corpse Bride I poked fun of this while talking about Frankenweenie, but that doesn't necessarily mean I didn't find it good. I do watch this every year because I do like the premise. 
and as always, Burton kills it in the animation and atmosphere department. It's just not necessarily a movie I'd put high up on the list of my favorite Burton pictures. It's pretty standard for me, though I will say the piano duet is one of my favorite things about this movie. The one character I enjoyed most was the bride herself. Very deep character, and I think the resolution in the end, though pretty heartbreaking, was fitting for her character arc. It's something I definitely encourage people to check out. And finally, number one. Monster House. Okay, I don't know how many people would agree with me on this, but this movie is simply amazing. But a lot like Frankenweenie, when it first came out, I didn't think it was gonna be. I thought it was gonna be stupid, and I was young as hell when trailers for this came out. I thought, eh, stupid house that comes to life, not wasting my money on that. But after renting a physical copy for the hell of it, I highly underestimated this film. The animation is great, very detailed and disturbing at times. The humor in it has a little bit of everything funny, the plot was surprisingly well put together, and I'm not gonna give anything big away, but the history of this house would absolutely scar a kid. This is a kid's movie, mind you, and there is intense shit in this movie. Borderline PG-13 elements. I am not kidding. The story is basically centered around these three kids who, after the old man across the street supposedly dies, rather gruesomely, might I add, they come to realize the house he lived in is very much alive, possibly haunted by the old man's spirit. If I were to compare the flow, humor, and structure of this movie, it's actually pretty comparable to what you'd see in a season of Stranger Things. The kids act very similarly, it has a lot of things that hint it might take place in the 80s, and they try to unravel the big mystery behind DJ's neighbor's house. And it gets very interesting. I would even say interesting right off the bat, very little about the actual story was given away in the movie trailer. All they really told us is that these kids are going up against the monster house. It didn't mention anything about old man Nebercracker, or that he was this angry old man who stole toys from kids who approached his property, or that he dies at the beginning. Or kind of, watch the movie and you'll know what I mean. Hell, they got a pretty good cast for this movie too. There isn't really any big names with the kid actors other than Mitchell Musso, who's a big star on Disney Channel. As for the adults, they got some surprisingly big actors. Steve Buscemi plays the grouchy neighbor, Megan Gyllenhaal plays a mean babysitter, Jason Lee plays a douchebag rock star, and they play the parts really well. All I'm gonna say otherwise about this movie is, it really does have to be seen to be believed. It's a lot of fun. If you like fast-paced humor and adventure, but also like peeing your pants over creepy and disturbing moments, you can find both of these here. And you want to know another reason why this is my number one? One of my main reasons even? It's the only one on this damn list that actually takes place on Halloween. No, but in all seriousness, I really encourage you all to watch these movies around this time of year. They're all really good, at least to me. And I especially hope you guys like this Halloween special I put together. It was a lot of fun to make, and it was kind of short notice because of the reasons I gave at the beginning. I feel like this is a nice change for this year. I hope you guys feel the same. If any of you guys are new here, feel free to subscribe if you like horror or other stuff. And you can reach me on Twitter primarily. Link is in the description. And I hope you all have an amazing Halloween. Stay your awesome selves.